Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, maybe good afternoon to folks who are joining from East Coast. If you can hear me, can you just uh, click on your uh, hand, hand sign so that I know that you guys can hear me? Very good. Great. Click on it again. Okay. All right. Great. Cool. Um, I am Pankaj Joshi. I'm CMO of Sunar Tech, and I'll be moderating the session here today. I have two very interesting um, panelists here with me uh, that I'll be introducing to you shortly, uh, and they will be the main guys who will be speaking. So. <clears throat> Thank you for your time, and I think we'll uh, make the best out of it today. Before I get the panelists uh, and introduce them to you, I would just do a little bit of housekeeping just to give them an idea of who, who are uh, listening to them. So I'm going to launch a very quick poll, 30-second poll, and if you guys can um, participate in that. That would be amazing. The first poll, which I'm just launching, is about your company size. Pick the right option applicable to you. Okay. Just give you a couple more seconds. Okay. All right. All right. So we have some smaller 10 to 50 million revenue range and some mid size 50 to 500 million range companies. So that's it. Uh, very quickly, another one, you know, one more poll to know to understand if you are familiar with expeditors. So if you are familiar with expeditors, uh, choose the option that's relevant to you. Very nice. Let's give a couple more seconds. Okay. So 50%, yes, 50% uh, are not familiar. Okay, great. And the last one. As for people who are familiar, do you directly manage the expeditors? Okay, yes, so that's great. Very nice, good. So I'm going to close. So I'm done with my poll. So the panelists know now that they are speaking to at least 50% of people who are familiar with expeditors. And uh, for other 50%, maybe we need to uh, explain a little bit. Okay. All right. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Zach Pratt, who is VP of Production, Beta Shame. Uh, Zach, do you want to step in and uh, talk, uh, introduce Beta Shame to our audience a bit? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you again for having me today. Um, and I'm Zach Pratt, uh, Vice President here at a company called Beta Shim Company. We are located in uh, Connecticut, United States. We are a manufacturer of uh, metal stamping, uh, machined work, uh, precision, high precision type of uh, parts uh, from one piece to hundreds of thousands of pieces for the aerospace industry, mostly for the aerospace industry. Um, that being said, our largest customers are uh, Lockheed Martin, Squirsky Aircraft and such. Because of the amount of volume that we do with them uh, in regards to not just the amount of volume dollar-wise, but 
the amount of volume that we do as far as the amount of different unique part numbers that we do with them per year, um, not just repeat orders, but also brand new parts um, and brand new orders, uh, it's, it's a very large volume. We tend to deal with roughly a thousand part numbers that are due right away and we have roughly 7,500 different part numbers that are due all within the next six months. We typically have a two to three week lead time and turnaround time. So because the amount of uh, the high quantity, the high volume and the quick turnaround time, at least for our industry, it's quick turnaround time. We have um, we have a lot of parts that that the customer or expediters are calling for. So when we say expediters, as 50% of you already know, I mean that these are the people who are calling to find out where your parts are, or they're the people who are working for your company who are calling out and and finding out where your parts are in the system. Um, or in the process. Uh, that being said, an expediter is just a glorified term for any customer that is calling to ask you where their parts are. So anybody at all who's ever calling your company to find out where your parts are, we, we need to come up with a solution. So what the problem was that we have Sikorsky Aircraft and Lockheed Martin and Boeing and Bell Helicopter, they're all such large companies that they have multiple people calling us uh, and emailing. So it's email, texting, and calling us for their parts, wanting to know where their parts are. So we are getting roughly uh, email traffic or voicemail traffic somewhere around 100 times per day uh, going to three or four different people within our company. And we're only at 65, uh, we only have 65 employees. So to have five or six of those people being tasked, you're talking about at least around a 10% of our workforce is gearing towards answering phone calls from the customer. Uh, the experts asking where our parts are. And the problem we always had was it was always just two, there's always the same two questions. Do you have the part in stock? And if you don't have it in stock, do you have it in WIP? And if it's in WIP, where is it in WIP? You know, where is it in process? Is it is it almost done or is it coming up? So because we had so many phone calls going on, and by, and by the way, the phone calls and the emails from the expediters, there's a lot of crosstalk. So a lot of times you'd have an expediter calling on a part in the morning, and then in the afternoon another expediter from the same company would call on the same exact part because the customer wasn't talking to themselves. They, their experts weren't talking to each other. So we were answering the same emails and the same questions multiple times per day. And we were getting, uh, like I said, roughly 100 emails per day or 100 uh, requests per day for, for parts. And each one of those requests would have on average 10 different part numbers. So you talk about 1,000 different part numbers that we had to keep looking up, that five or six people are looking up every day and trying to get answers for. And then on top of that, once we gave them an answer, uh, if we had to give them that, uh, uh, an answer again the next day, we had to do the process all over again. So it was it was a very big challenge trying to keep up with the amount of parts they were asked for. On top of which, once we had told them, oh, you, uh, the part is we have the part in stock, we'll ship it out tomorrow. That's that's an easy solution. The harder solution was we have the part in the beginning process. It's going to take us two weeks to get the part out to you. Well, because of the thousands of part numbers that we're dealing with, by the time the two weeks was up and the part should have been shipping out to the customer, we were losing sight of it because we were expediting thousands of other parts along with it. So we kept making promises we just couldn't keep. We were making a promise that, oh, you'll get your part in two weeks. But because something else came up in the meantime, that part got pushed out. So we were losing visibility of where the part was internally and whether or not it was a high priority. Because as I'm sure everyone's aware, you have, you might have a low level expediter, somebody who's just asking random questions about where their parts are because they're trying to report to their boss. But then you also have a, a senior vice president of a company like Sikorsky calling you up and saying, I need this one particular part and I need it by the next two weeks. That has a little bit more weight to it 
that promise you make to that customer has, a, has to have a lot more weight to it and a higher priority to it. So the next problem we had was we weren't able to keep up with the priority statuses for certain, for certain parts. So we're spending all this time collecting all this data and then having to redo it again the next day. So it's, it's manpower, it, it's, 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 it's computers, it's, uh, it's moving around the priorities of part numbers constantly. So we were, the only way to mitigate that would be to hire more people and to hire, hire more people to specifically task them with responding to the customer. And what I really wanted to have was uh, I needed one single dashboard to be able to view uh, all of the parts that were in process in our company and to be able to view all of the parts that we had in stock live. It couldn't just be on an Excel spreadsheet and with a very static uh, feel to it. It had to be running current and live. That way, I don't have to lie to the customer anymore. I didn't want to have to sit there and guess at how much parts I had in stock today versus how much I have in stock tomorrow. They need to see a very live view of this. Um, it helped them make decisions. So now yep, that I want uh, this live dashboard for myself, oh, yeah. Right, Zach. I think, I think yeah, that, that's great. I think that, that summarizes your challenges uh, really well. So how long uh, were you facing this problem before you started looking for a solution? Uh, at least five years. Wow. We started, okay. Yeah, we started looking for a solution, and uh, we tried to make our own solution. Could, that didn't work too well. Yeah, could you share that journey with, uh, with our audience? Like, you know, how did you start looking for a solution? What did you do? And how did you end up with ECM? Right. So the the first solution was to go with a whiteboard out in the out in the shop, but that didn't work out too well because I have I had seven major whiteboards that had to be updated on a daily basis, so that didn't work well. We went to an Excel spreadsheet, and like I said, that was not a live version. We then tried to do our own type of barcoding system. Um, within our own company hooked up to freeware, shareware uh, type database. And we were we were on the right track at that point. We had an internal website, but we couldn't get secure enough to be able to give it to the customer externally. Um, and on top of that, we couldn't connect our internal database to our ERP and MRP system, which would carry which carries our live inventory. So while I was able to get some of the live tracking within our own shop uh, for myself, I wasn't able to supply that to the customer, nor was I able to supply that uh, our live inventory to the customer. So I was halfway there. And every time I tried to implement the solution externally, I just didn't feel comfortable giving that kind of uh, access to our, our information. So the way this all came about was, uh, you know, we, we we didn't consider an outside source uh, at first. Uh, when we finally decided to get around to an outside source, it was going to cost in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to do this. And we just don't have that kind of capital to invest in this technology. Um, Oracle came to us and said, hey, listen, uh, we think we might have a solution for you. Uh, and they And they made the... Uh, they introduced us to eSeal uh, or to Sonerotech. And when we met with Sonerotech, uh, it was as though they knew exactly what I was looking for. When I explained the problem and explained what I was looking to do for a solution, uh, it was uh, breathtaking to actually have to have somebody understand what my problems were and sit there and say, yes, we know how to do this, and we can help you do that. So we had to look into the, the cost uh, of it. So the, the, my biggest problem was after meeting with Sinertech, after after having them realize that they could help us, was my next problem was, geez, I bet you this is going to cost me an arm and a leg. And actually, the cost uh, was minimal in comparison to the solution they were going to be able to provide us. Um, the implementation, uh, there was a little bit of a, of, a, of a glitch at the beginning of this, but I believe that was mostly my fault um, because I had so many ideas that I didn't have them organized well enough. 
once we were able to finally sit down and organize my scattered thoughts, we were able to have a project manager through Snare Tech and eSeal and come up with uh, a very firm project outline. Um, and the biggest part of this whole thing was not just recreating something that we already had and then making it external through using an Oracle databases and Oracle cloud servers, um, which is a huge part of this. Uh, but the other huge part of it was to take that database and that cloud service and integrate it with our existing ERP and MRP system. And all of this had to happen uh, very transparently. I sh this couldn't affect my normal daily business because we do have government rated parts here and we cannot, we couldn't negatively impact our daily business with this solution. Like if we were to switch over to a brand new ERP system or a brand new MRP system, the cost would be astronomical and the time it would take to implement and the time that it would take away from our actual production would be crippling. So the other part of this is we don't build software. This is not our gig. So I really just needed to be able to communicate what I wanted effectively to Snarotech and to eSeal and to the project managers that, that they provided us so that they could take over and implement and not have to worry about the distraction that it would cause to our company. Uh, and also throw in to the maintenance of it. Since Sonatech was building and ECL was going to build this, they were going to maintain it as well. Uh, and we also need to make sure that and this wouldn't you know, just be on a local server and get bogged down by our own server uh, inaccuracies or our own bandwidth of our, of, our, uh, of our T1 line. So it had to be scalable to the point of, you know, with, with Oracle's uh, cloud server and cloud databases to be able to have, if we want to, on a whim, double or triple or quadruple our size, uh, it wouldn't be a problem. There was, there's, so there's a zero, zero problem with scalability. Uh, and like I said, if, Oracle is, oh, sorry, yep. Yeah. Something that, that, that really captures your, your whole story of uh, searching for a solution, trying to build it in-house to finding the right partner, with the, uh, you know, at the right price point and addressing all your, um, uh, you know, concerns, right? So, so I think that was well captured. Uh, to all our uh, audience, I just want to kind of say that if you have questions for them, Please type in your questions and I'll get them and I'll read it out to them and I, 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 I you know, either ask Zach or uh, Sudhir, who's our uh, other panelist. Uh, so Zach, with your permission, can I introduce uh, Sudhir now to the audience? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, guys, I have Sudhir, who is the co-founder uh, of EC here with me and he will uh, share a uh, few uh, your details about eSeal as well as talk about the solution that was implemented at BetaShem. Sure. So over to you. Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, thank you, Jack. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to all of, all of you who have dialed in. Uh, well, I have uh, co-founded eSeal as a subsidiary of Sunera Tech uh, about six years ago. And since then, we've been working with a number of manufacturers, cutting across a uh, few verticals, and, and in helping them go live with the supply chain. We are headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, uh, with our offices in Troy, Michigan, and San Jose, California. We have our development centers in India. Just to talk about the eSeal as a platform, it's a software platform that comes with two sets of applications if I were to explain it in simple terms. One set of applications are called client app applications, which actually reside on the devices operated by the people, by a working team on the field. It could be your production team on the floor who are at the workstations. It could be the inventory handlers in your warehouses. They carry either a handle terminal or they carry a tablet or they may be using a desktop. So the applications that go on to them are called client applications, and that's one part of the eSeal platform, which essentially helps the team to identify the parts going through the production workflow 
and, and uh, access the information from the back end from MRP or ERP and help them to update the process, I mean, update the progress in real time so that such information can be captured and aggregated and shown through a portal, which is the second part of the eSeal platform, which is, a, which, which is actually a, a web-based portal that's used by the executives, uh, such as some of you have logged in, to, such as Jack at Bidashim, to gain a real-time view of the work in progress of production, the part search, the work stop, the reason for that, the, the priority list, and so on and so forth, of which a part of it could also be shared with your customers, such as, uh, you know, such as the ones whom you are supplying parts to. So that second part is essentially the portal part. So the combination ECL is a combination of these two set of applications uh, used by your field team as well as by the executives who are monitoring the uh, systems. We are a proven solution. Um, we currently track about uh, 178, more than 178 products as on date. And we add about 198,000 products on a daily basis, working with many manufacturers. We have enabled about 115 production floors or production lines and about 214 warehouses. And these are supporting almost 728 dispatches a day. As you can imagine the criticality of the application, I mean, it's, it's mission critical for, for almost all the customers that we work with. And, and it, it works with, I mean, it has to be, uh, you know, managed at, at, a, at a level in which uh, it has to be up and running almost all the time without any downtime. As in typical, most of the uh, installations, uh, even at Beta Shim, we had taken a very simple approach of three-step process. We had made two visits to Beta Shim. The first one, after the initial discussions, after Oracle made the introductions, we had gone in and understood their systems. We have uh, studied their production floor processes. We looked at their travelers. We looked at their ERP and MRP systems. Uh, we have discussed with Jack and other team members in terms of the report requirements that they, you know, that they ha uh, wanted to have. We had scheduled them in an order of priority. Then we came back to offline mode to implement the application, basically in terms of configuring it for Virashim for integrating the application with uh, Betashim's ERP, uh, which did take a bit of time uh, given that it's, a, uh, it's not one of the standard ERPs that typically one would use. And, and then uh, we had gone back again the second time to actually implement it in live and support it post the go live. As Jack mentioned, we continue to support it, we continue to maintain it, and we continue to enhance it in terms of new upgrades and new features being added on an ongoing basis. Uh, eSeal also comes with uh, five modules in all. The one that we implemented for BetaShim here is called Live Production, which is essentially taking the entire production live and, and, and showing it to both yourself as your customers who needs to have certain information of it. The other four modules that one could potentially use are live inventory, which helps you to track products moving through your warehouses from production floor in real time. We have live suppliers. In case you're using suppliers for supplying products to you and you would want to have a view of, a real-time view of the activity at supplier end, we, we, we offer a live supplier module for that. We also have live channels. In case you have uh, uh, wholesale distributors or you know the channel partners, uh, at which place you would want to track their inventory status, you would want to track the secondary sales status, you could use live uh, channels. And finally, the live service. If you're in after-sales service for your parts of your products and you'd want to track the uh, validation or validate the digital warranty or track the spare parts inventory at your service partner end, you could use that module as well. So in all, ECL comes with the entire set of five modules to make your entire supply chain live from suppliers all the way to service. Right. Uh, at this point, let me hand over 
hand it over back to Jack to explain us the benefits that he was able to see from this solution. Yeah, I think the most uh, important uh, topic. So, Jack, you have looked for a solution. You had pain points. You have implemented a solution now with eFeel and Oracle. How do you, you know, can you can you share with the audience in terms of the benefits, both tangible and intangible benefits that you get on a day-to-day -day basis from the solution? Uh, yeah, I can speak a little bit to that. Um, so the cost savings to us, uh, like you said, there are, there are tangible and intangible. So, so the tangibles would be that I don't need to, as we are scaling up in production, I don't need to uh, hire new people to hire and train new people to expedite uh, or handle expedites from the customer. So I don't basically I don't need customer service people as we grow, and that is roughly uh, on average uh, somewhere around fifty thousand uh, dollars per roughly two million dollars in. Uh, revenue. So for every $2 million worth of product we sell to a large company like Sikorsky, Lockheed, Boeing, or Bell, um, it, it's rough, It's at least one person. One person being somewhere around 50 k between training and uh, salary and, and benefits. Um, so besides that cost savings, there's also the, the time element. So a lot, now that I've been giving our supply, our customers and our exp, the expeditors from those customers the ability to go online and check on our portal, they are now able to uh, field a lot of their own easy questions, which has freed up my time from, let's say, on average, uh, 25 emails a day to me personally from high-level expeditors or vice presidents of companies. I'm now down to maybe 10, so that's cut in over 40% right there in email traffic that I have to deal with, which allows me other time to go ahead and, and take care of solutions that we need for our processes. I'm here to run a company. I'm, you know, I'm here to make parts. I'm not here to create charts for anybody else. So it, the less time I have to spend on that, the, the better I can make my own company and, and, again, provide us the ability to improve and to grow. And on top of that, there's other things that we're still realizing um, as more and more uh, customers and experts from Sikorsky and Boeing, Bell, Lockheed are using the software. They're using it uh, for things that I never even thought about in the past. So now they're actually looking up stock, and they're going ahead and looking in their schedules six months out, a year out, and seeing if they could possibly uh, get the customer to buy off those parts, their customers, which is usually the government, to buy off parts uh, that were supposed to be for January of next year and instead pull them into today's date. So that's new revenue for them and it's revenue for us uh, that's being pulled in date-wise, which is huge. The other part of this too is that we're trying to really get uh, something going here with Sikorsky and, and Lockheed to help them realize the benefits that if they automated this, our, our, product, or our portal and synergize it with their, port, their online portal, there could be a lot of miscommunications that would be cut down. And it, it, it could only generate more revenue faster for us and for the customer. Okay. That's amazing. All right. Great. Um, I think that brings us to our Q&A session. Guys, uh, please feel free to you know, uh, ask questions, type in your questions, and I will um, pass it on to our panelists. There are a few that have already come up, um, Zach and Sudhir, so let me combine a few of them and then share it with you. Uh, this one is probably, Sudhir, you want to take this? It says, how long does it take to implement a solution like EC. So, sure. Yeah, since EC comes off the shelf with all the APIs that are required for integrating with your current systems, we typically implement an ECL 
uh, for live production kind of a thing, anywhere between eight weeks to about uh, 12 weeks. Uh, that's a typical standard time, uh, unless until there are any customizations that are required or any additional things that need to be done. Okay. So between eight to 12 weeks is a typical implementation. That's correct. Okay. That's great. Um, okay. Uh, we've uh, answered this, but I think there's a question on where are you located in, in U.S.? Where are the offices? Uh, so yeah, so uh, as I said, we are a Chicago-based company. Uh, we have offices in Michigan and we have offices in San Jose, California. Uh, we have sales team presence all over the U.S. We'll be glad to make a visit if anyone is interested in understanding how, how it works out for them. Okay. All right. Um, There's one question which says, is EC the first of its kind in the current market? So I think the question is about, you know, is it, uh, it are there others like EC? The, so the, both of you can answer this. Sure. <laughs> Jack, if you, you want, since you have looked at some solutions, you want to go with that and then I could add to that? Um, when I say it's a first in kind, I would say so only because everything else we looked at had parts of the solution. I feel like eSeal has all the solutions, especially for something off the shelf, where it's not just the customizations, but you can easily uh, make it adaptable to any and all companies. So I'd say it's a first. Thank you. Okay. Um. So this this one question uh, is for uh, you know from me today. Um, so in, in terms of you know so easy you are bringing in a digitalization of uh, supply chain. Now typically it's considered to be like the big boy game. It's like a big expense item. And Zach, you you started digitalizing your production. Um, so so does it have to be a big boy game, or you think? Uh, you know, mid-sized companies also can take up uh, and get benefits of digital supply network. Because yeah, that was one of the agendas of this webinar. So I want to make sure that we highlight that point. Right. So I think that that's where we we have a unique positioning uh, because you know we are from a digitalization perspective, we do everything that's required for digitalization in the book. You have every part ID'd with a unique ID. And every part has a cloud storage that captures information about the source of the part and the movement of the part to the supply chain. And all of the information is integrated with your ERP with push and pull of data. And then you have this exclusive customizable dashboard in which you would want to look at the data the way you would want for your business. So it's a combination of digitalization of supply chain as well as the amount of customization we give for you to manage your business in a much better manner. So it, it need not be a big, big man's, I mean, big company's game anymore. Uh, solutions such as eSeal can help smaller companies as well digitalize their whole supply chain and be much smarter about, you know, going about managing the supply chain. Okay. So there is one question that has come up. Is it's around cost? Uh, so. So do you want to sure. take Yeah, e-seal is basically priced on usage. Uh, you, the more you use, the more you pay, the less you use, the less you pay. There's a one-time cost, of course, which is upfront, which is related to implementing it and configuring it for you and integrating with your ERP. That might include a couple of visits from our team. Once it's implemented, then it's the recurring cost has two components. Uh, the number of eSeal IDs that are required or that are directly proportioned to the number of products you would like to track. And you buy these IDs in advance, and that's one cost to you. And the second cost is essentially the annual subscription fee for the software, which is hosted, maintained, and enhanced by an ongoing basis. And that subscription fee depends upon number of modules you're using. As I mentioned, there are five modules. In Betashim case, we had used, used one module, which is live production. 
So depending on the number of modules you use, there's an annual sub software subscription fee as well. Okay, so it's primarily paper use. Yeah, it's primarily paper use. Okay, great. Okay, um, so there are no more questions as such uh, right now. Uh, guys, we've uh, beaten the time. Actually, we have done it I think five, seven minutes before, right? Before time. Um, to all your our uh, audience and attendees, uh, thank you for your time. I hope you uh, really gain some insight uh, from this webinar. Um, and there will be like while you're exiting this, uh, there will be a survey that uh, if you can participate to see if you know help us improve on our uh, delivering better webinars to you. I'll appreciate that. Yeah. And I'd like to thank uh, Sudhir and Zach for. Uh, participating in this and uh, sharing your experiences with our audience. Thank, thank you, Sadeer. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, folks. Bye. Thank you.